Basta inyo ba yan? Portal Ryan up before Ariana Pantelio. Hello. Hello. It's okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for coming. This is honestly, it's so overwhelming. As you guys know, I am from Canada, and back in Canada, pageantry is not very supported. So to come here to the Philippines to the powerhouse of pageantry and to be sitting in front of a media it's just it's amazing so thank you guys all so much for being here thank you guys so much for your support i can't wait till you guys get to know me more all right <laughs> again hello everyone my name is ariana pantaleon i'm 21 years old and i was born and raised in canada but i am a full-blooded filipina I have a degree in public speaking and communications and have worked in various fields of work, but I am most proud of my work in the, hello, is it working? But I'm most proud of my work in the Filipino community of Kenna, which I am heavily involved in. I am an advocate against domestic violence because I saw a family member go through it, and I was also involved in an organization back home in Canada that shelters women and children. I was also involved in a donation drive for Typhoon Karina as of recently because volunteerism and giving back has always been strongly instilled in me. In my free time, I love to listen to music and to sing just like every other Filipino, of course. And little fun fact, I've actually been joining pageants since I was nine years old. So to be standing in front of here, in front of you guys, like I said, has honestly been a dream come true and a fulfillment of my dreams and aspirations. So to become an official Mutia candidate has given me purpose and a drive to attain more. So thank you so much for your support once again. And I am Ariana Pinsleyan, your Mutia in Filipinas Canada 2024. Hashtag of Mutiana Filipinas. But in fact, you could be more of a sophisticated uh, woman raised in one of the bustling cities in the world. How do you connect yourself to the Shine Hometown Girl hashtag of Mutiana? Well, I think that hashtag Shine Home Girl kind of means you know, coming from wherever you come from, whether it come from the province, whether you come from an overseas community, that you'll shine no matter what, being a Filipina outside of the country or not. And I definitely think that I can relate to that, and that's something that I can bring to the table, because even though I was born and raised in Canada, or let's say Toronto, like I said, the Filipino community down there is massive, and we still continue to carry the love of pageantry and the support of the Filipino people who go internationally. And that's, like I said, something that I think that I can bring is the love of the Filipino people no matter where you are in the world because for me I feel like not only am I able to reach the Filipinos here in the Philippines but in Canada as well too and all around the world. Okay, so my follow-up question to you is this. You have a degree in public speaking. Uh, Two questions. Mm -hmm. First is, do you think you have a tendency to overthink your answers just because you know all the ins and outs of public speaking. You know you what? Use. Absolutely, yes. Um, as someone who is has a degree in public speaking, I think that I wanted to go into that field because I have a lot of thoughts and there's a lot of things there's a lot of things that I have to say and I'm very I'm very much a conversationalist. So I can sit down with someone and I can have a conversation with them for a really long time because not because I love to speak. I have a lot on my mind and I want to say what's on my mind and I enjoy speaking what's on my mind. So to answer your question, yes, I do overthink a lot of my questions, but at the same time I have to remember the question directly and what's more important in the whole entire sentence rather than just continuing on. Do you think that, do you think that this will give you uh, a strong advantage over the other ladies competing for this year's crowns? I think everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses, and I can say for me that one of my strengths is public speaking. 
Um, and it's not just within being able to talk a lot, but it's also how you say it, you know, your delivery and the types of things that you say, making sure, like I said, you're saying the right thing and the way you compose yourself. So yes, I definitely do think that I have advantage in public speaking. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you so much, I Lisa. think that even if you grew up in Canada, you look like someone who just speaks good English, but you were born here in Canada. Thank you so much. Very, very benign. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hi, Ariana. Oh, you want to see? No, I'm okay. Okay. And okay. <laughs> you have a lot of your face. You have a lot of your face. Bindi and then si uh, anak ni Laura Diaz, Isabel Diaz. Ayon. Rufa May. Rufa Gutierrez. Ariana, of course, you did research about Mochana Pilipinas before, of course, joining Mochana Pilipinas. So, what interests you about Mochana Pilipinas? I think you will have to be everything. I really love Mochana, and it's actually funny. You can ask my mom about this. I have watched the Mutia videos over and over and over again in my room, watching on YouTube all the time, especially since before I competed. This is a pageant I knew that I really, really wanted to join. And actually, growing up, I watched my two sisters compete in pageantry, and I saw them grow up into you know beautiful young ladies who were able to give back to the community and who gained such confidence through that experience. So I told myself, if I were ever to compete in a pageant, I wanted to make sure that I pick the right one and the one that fit me properly. And that's when I saw Mutia and I thought that it would be a perfect experience for me to gain confidence and to give back to the community. So that's why I wanted to join Mutia and that's why I'm standing here today because everything about Mutia, I love it and I think that this organization provides these young ladies with a platform whether they are new queens or whether they have been in the industry for a while. Corona lang ang pula, no? Corona na lang. Anyway, who's your favorite Mochana Pilipina sumina? Thank you for the answer, Dad. I said on my video. Edge, can you ask that question again? Hindi na pwede. Ito ko rin. Nagbibideo ang lahat. Hi, Ariana. So, who's your favorite Mochana Pilipina title holder? For me, my favorite Mochana Pilipina title holder would be last year's title holder of Overseas Communities, Miss California. I would want to say her because we have similarities of coming from overseas, and I watched her throughout the whole entire pageant, and she shined so beautifully. And I definitely think, like I said, that coming from an overseas community could be a lot harder than coming from Canada, you know, maybe not being able to speak Tagalog, or, making, or people feeling like, or you're feeling like, you're left out because you weren't born and raised here. So for me, I definitely think that we can relate um, somewhat. So I definitely think she's my favorite title holder. Nasaan ka mood siya? Eto na siya. Thank you so much, Ariana. Thank you so much, Edge. The next two Filipino words. A favorite two Filipino words. And why? Oh, that's so hard. Okay. <laughs> of course, the first one I would pick, would pick is maganda. I would say that one, of course, because you can use that word in many instances, whether you be talking about someone, whether you be talking about a view, and I think the Philippines is so beautiful. You can use that word so many times here, so I definitely think that that's one of my favorites for sure. And this one's kind of weird, but I'd say, am I saying this right? Gotten? Like eat? Yeah. I only say that one because the hospitality of the Filipinos, I feel like anywhere you go within the household, they're always telling you, come on, let's eat now, like let's eat, have you eaten yet, make sure you eat, and I definitely think that even though it's just telling you come eat, it's such a heartwarming gesture for them to say because you feel so welcome regardless of where you are in the Philippines. Okay, follow-up question. Of course. <laughs> um, do you think that being a well-spoken uh, person can when one of the counts of Mutiana Pilipinas 2024, or um, do you think it's enough, or you need to learn more Tagalog to be, to be uh, more relatable? Definitely think I need to learn more Tagalog, and as of right now, I am 
taking the Tagalog lessons. So I'm working on it. I'm almost there, but I'm working on it. But being well-spoken, of course, can get you very far. But it's not just being well-spoken that will win you the crown. Of course, you have to be a queen overall and a beauty queen overall in terms of every aspect within pageantry. So I definitely think it's an advantage, but maybe not something that will win you the crown if you are just well-spoken. Okay, Matia, may dinner na tayo. <laughs> Thank you so much, Oyel. The next question. Your journey, pageant journey since uh, you were uh, nine years old? Nine years old, yes. All right. So my question for you is, what have you learned from your, you know, from the pageant you had before? And uh, what are your game plan now that you are competing for the national competition or pageant? Of course. Like I said, pageantry in Canada is not well supported. So the experience of having pageantry was amazing, of course, but it's definitely different from here in the Philippines. Um, and something that I took away from that is, I mean, I was younger, so it's for me it was mainly just enjoying and just fun, fun, dressing up. It was really, it was a really good time for me. But even then, since I was young, I think I still gained confidence through that. And I think that's what I can use towards my game plan right now, going into Mutia and going into a national pageant, is that confidence is everything. And you have to make sure that you strongly believe in everything that you're saying and everything that you're doing and have the confidence to make sure that you are worthy of being on that stage. Very well said. And follow-up question. So since you have joined various pageant, and of course you are considered now as a beauty queen, my question for you is, what's the hardest thing of being a beauty queen? I think my answer for right now would be being in the public eye as a beauty queen. Everyone knows that being a beauty queen in pageantry, especially in the Philippines, you gain a lot of supporters, you gain a lot of fans, and of course you become in the public eye. And like I said, back home in Canada, it's not really like that. So when I was in the pageants, it was very no support, minimal to no support at all so to be in the public eye i think it's still something that i'm getting used to but at the same time i can use that to my advantage as well too and allow you guys to get to know me more and use that like i said towards my advantage to going into a national pageant wow well mutia here she is being <laughs> <laughs> mutia filipinas 2024 what can you offer to the organization or what project would you offer to them first if I were to win with the Filipinas 2024, I think something that I'm able to offer to them is showing that there is growth that can be done. I want to be able to grow with the organization and then I realize that not only is it just a title, but it's a responsibility as well too. It's not just a responsibility towards the title and representing the Philippines, but a responsibility towards the queen herself and responsibility towards the organization. So I think I am able to offer a lot, especially coming from Canada. I can offer a perspective from Filipinos in Canada that maybe we can't get here. So like I said, I'm definitely willing to grow with the organization and be able to exchange ideas and allow not only me to grow, but the organization as well too. Thank you. I'm very inspired that the same thing that brought Iliana, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Iliana, <laughs> Iliana. <laughs> uh, Ms. Jam and Sir Paul uh, become a Bukia queen. I definitely think it's an inspiration more than it is a pressure. To be able to look up to a queen like that, especially coming from the same agency, has been so inspiring to me. And to watch her journey through with the Filipinas, I think I can use that to my advantage and to use that towards going into the competition to prove that I'm very capable just as much as she was. After a year coming here in the Philippines, what have you changed? Oh, lots has changed. <laughs> um, I think me as a person overall has changed. Coming into Canada for the very first time, this was actually my first time being separated from my parents ever. So to come here by myself, and it's funny actually, I remember sitting down in my empty room when I first came here from the airport and looking at my two luggages with my whole entire life in here, I was thinking like there's no way that this is real, like, there's no way this had actually happened and that I had made my dreams into reality and moved across the world. So I definitely think that me as a person during that time, I had changed and I gained my independence towards then and now I'm able to navigate my way through small situations, big situations and any situation that comes my way, especially going into my 
Thank you so much, Pajin Q Fanatic, as you join. The next question. Google the, the definition of your name. But before I, uh, it's a very beautiful definition. Do you know why you're named Ariana by your parents? And if you know the definition, can you inform them? I actually don't know the definition. <coughs> I do know the reason as to why my parents named me Ariana, though. It's a really, really funny. I don't know if my mom's even mind people saying this, because it's so funny. But the reason why is because when my mom was pregnant, they were watching TV. And on TV, there was a commercial, and there was a little girl knocking on the door, and she was asking, can Ariana come out to play? And ever since my mom heard the name Ariana, she thought that it was so beautiful. And especially when I came out, she <coughs> thought that it would be a perfect fit for me. So that is why she named me that. I wish I knew the definition though. Uh, it means pure excellence and wow. most holy. So wow. it, it is pressure for you to really... Uh, <laughs> of course. Really. It, it's a Greek word, which Ari means pure and then Adda means excellence. So that is a challenge for you to do quite pure excellence in your Michiana Pilipinas competition. So now uh, it's, it's, it's a hot topic on social media about um, so, uh, Filipino values versus achievements in life. So which is more important as a Mutiana Pilipinas for you? Losing Filipino values and gaining achievements or gaining achievements but su sacrificing values that you grew up with for me that question would have to be losing achievements and continuing to stay with my filipino roots i only say that because like i said my parents um, have been such big anchors um, in my journey and they have taught me and raised me to be the person that i am today and they continue to raise me with those filipino values even though i was grown born and raised in Canada, and I don't think that's something that I could ever take away because it is strongly instilled in me regardless of where I go, regardless if I'm here, regardless if I'm in Canada. Mm. So if I had to pick between the two, I'd have to continue staying with my Filipino values because if it weren't for the Filipino values, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Thank you and best of luck. Oh, Ari. All right, so I know there's a lot of beauty pageants here in the Philippines, so why would get no Filipinas? So like I said, I watched my two sisters grow up in pageantry and I told myself that if I wanted to compete, I wanted to be able to find a pageant that was a perfect fit for me. I did come across Mutia because of my Canadian director. We were actually sitting down and deciding which pageant they thought was best for me. And I had a lot of options to do pageants, not in the Philippines, but in Canada as well too. But I thought about it and I thought that coming to the Philippines would just be the cherry on top to me chasing my dreams and allowing me to grow more and to continue growing more as I came here to the Philippines. So I picked Mundia because like I said, I love the organization. I think it's a perfect opportunity and it allows women to express themselves and, ex and explore their advocacies and explore who they are as a person. All right, so follow up now. So what have you sacrificed joining this pageant? I have sacrificed being with my family. So like I said, I came to I came to the Philippines let's say less than a year ago and moved here by myself without my parents. And I've been living with my parents my whole entire life. So I'm only 21, so I've been living with my parents in Canada. And um, I definitely think that that's been the biggest sacrifice. And I think it really hit me and I really noticed that the sacrifice was taking a toll when um, they would FaceTime me and I'd see that I'd be missing the Christmas and the birthdays of my nieces and my nephews and birthdays of my dads and seeing them all get together and have this big family party and I was sitting at home by myself doing my pageant training has been the hardest sacrifice for me I would say but I know it's going to be all worth it at the end so I'm really <coughs> thankful that even though they're all the way across the world in Canada that they're still here to support me in the Philippines. Thank you. Best Thank you so much. The next question is from... I doesn't find pageantry that big, but in what? Do you think you will be able to make pageantry that big in Canada as it is in the Philippines? Absolutely. I definitely think that our Filipino love for pageantry is so strong that me representing um, a, an overseas community, especially like Canada, I can take all of that pride and all of that love of the Filipinos to Canada and to show them that pageantry is a beautiful thing and it's not just pageantry and glitz and glamour and getting makeup but it's all about the advocacy and the advocacy work 
and everything you put into it and changing and becoming a whole new person. So I definitely think that if there was an opportunity, I would love to bring pageantry as big as it is here back. Thank you very much. Ima, may I make one more question? Oh, oh. Okay, you share with us. Yes, because I think the sacrifice and the hard work speaks for itself. Like I said, coming here from Canada to the Philippines and being able to sacrifice being with my family and to come compete here in the Philippines coming from Canada, I definitely think that that shows how determined and how hardworking I really am towards the crown. And like I said, not only do I realize that this is just a title and just a crown, but it's an opportunity to represent the Philippines. And I definitely think that I would be the perfect candidate for that because coming from Canada, I can show them that there's so many wonderful Filipinos all around the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're not going to be able to get questions there. Ryan. Hi, Ari. What makes you proud as a Filipina and at the same time as a Canadian? Like I said, when I was in Canada, my parents have always raised me through the Filipino values. And I think what makes me the most proud of being Filipino or being Filipina is the fact that I am so family oriented because I realize that regardless of where I am in the world, as long as I have my family as my support system, that I'm able to achieve anything that I want. Thank you. If, what would be your profession today or now? <laughs> Before I decided that I wanted to do pageantry and come back home in Canada, I actually wanted to be an FBI agent. So I was back home in Canada, I was actually about to roll in criminology at one of the universities, so the University of Waterloo. And that's something that I really wanted because like I said, I am an advocate against domestic violence. So to be able to be an FBI agent, I feel like I could really help these people unfold these crimes and to be able to let these victims regain their confidence back. So if I wasn't doing pageantry, I feel like I would be an FBI agent. <laughs> uh, last question. What legacy would you like to be remembered of? I think the legacy that I want to be remembered by would be, like I said, the hard work and the sacrifice. I think that that is so strongly instilled in me, and that can be so strongly instilled in the youth and everywhere we go, and that can be a legacy that carries on through not just me, but the next mutya after that, or the next mutya after that. So I definitely think that to be able to show people all the sacrifice that was made in a Filipina coming from Canada to the Philippines, that's one of the sacrifices that I definitely think would stick the most. One most. Of course. <laughs> Are you vegan? Am I? Oh, no. no, I'm not. No, I am single. I'm focusing on my career right now. <laughs> focusing on my career right now. I'm focusing towards getting that down. Come, be waiting for me. When the crowds will cheer, when they see my face, and a voice keeps saying, this is where I'm meant to be. I'll be there someday. I can go the distance. I will find my way. If I can be strong, I know every mile will be worth my while. If I go the distance, I'll be Thank you so much. Anna Pantaleon, 21 years old, Filipino community of Canada.
press presentation. Ayan, ayan. Aura. Aura. Go, ayan. Oh, ayan, perfect. Ayan. Ganda, oh. Walang pudol, oh. Grabe, ganda. Friends, nawala yung backdrop. Nawala. Kasi may hilakad yata ka ito. Wait lang, isa lang. Okay, post ka na. Oo naman, gusto nyo? Hindi, kaya nga natin dito. Dito ka na. Testing ka na.